Good morning. Welcome to St. David's Episcopal Church in the Baltimore neighborhood of Roland Park. My name is Scott Bellows. I'm the rector here at St. David's, and it is my joy to welcome you here today to this virtual service of morning prayer. Today is Sunday, July the 25th. If you would like to follow a service bulletin, please click on the link on the page where you are viewing this either our YouTube channel or Facebook page. And now we invite you to join us as we come together to worship God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please join me in saying the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Peoples may know 
A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shashiach, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat, for thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He said it before them, they ate and they had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Here ends the lesson. Please join me in saying Canticle 19. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his, his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near their boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, 
do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. Here ends the lesson. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom and shrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, by day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Among the many of my favorite stories from the entire Bible, and even more narrowly from the Gospels, is the story that we hear today. This one comes from the Gospel according to St. John. And it is one of the feeding stories where Jesus feeds the multitudes. But the reason I love this story so much is because it is a child who saves the day. Now you might say, well, this story is really about Jesus performing a miracle feeding all these people. And yes, this is true. But if it hadn't been for the gift of the child, giving from what some might say a very small amount of what he had, Jesus would not have performed this miracle. This is one of my favorite stories when I talk with our children in our day school chapel or in our, when I talk with children through the year. I love it when this story comes up because it shows the power of the child. In this story, it happens to be the little boy is identified. It could be a little girl. It doesn't matter. Because Jesus always, throughout the Gospels, wherever he has the opportunity, raises up children as a model, as an ideal. Why? He says in another place in one of the Gospels that unless we become like this child, we will never understand or enter the kingdom of God. So what is it about children? Children have an innate joy about them. They have the ability to imagine things beyond their immediate experience. There is a sense of wonder, a sense of profound desire for discovery. I think that's one of the things that Jesus is really interested in. They also are resilient, and they are willing to move forward when something happens, when someone offends them. They tend to be willing to hear that, I'm sorry, 
and to move on in their lives. And so I think that's why Jesus would hope that we would all become like children. In today's story, we have Jesus. He's moved into the fullness of his ministry. People know about him. People have heard about him. They have seen the miracles that he has performed. He has healed people. He has, um, he has shared the good news of God's love for each of them. They see that here is someone who is willing to be with anyone, no matter who they are, even if they are society's outcasts. And in today's story, the crowd is enormous. The gospel says there are over 5,000 in all that have followed him on this day. He goes up to a high place and sits down with his disciples. And John says, in order to test them, because John says he already knows what he's going to do, Jesus says, how are we going to feed these people? Look at all these people. What are we going to do? Well, the disciples start to come up with reasons why it won't work. I imagine that there was this little boy close enough to what the conversation was happening with Jesus and the disciples to overhear. He knows that he has some food with him. His mom probably packed his lunch before he went out for the day. Maybe they're all there together, the whole family. They're going to hear Jesus. The little boy hears what's going on between Jesus and the disciples and offers up his meager lunch to help. Maybe this can be a help to solve the problem that we have here. One of the disciples, Philip, says, well, okay, here we have this, but of course this isn't going to feed people. I can only imagine the sense of love and admiration that Jesus had for that child when he offered up his simple offering, five loaves and two fish. Now, when we're thinking about loaves, we shouldn't be thinking about these great big loaves that we might get at the bakery, but something small and compact that would be able to fit into a, a day bag. And so the child offers up what he has. And Jesus is overwhelmed, I am sure, with joy and love for this child. He tells the disciples to sit down the people, and have them sit down wherever they are, and begins to distribute the bread and the fish. But first, he gives thanks. He gives thanks to God for what has been provided to feed the multitude. And feed the multitude it does. So much so that Jesus does something extraordinary, something ridiculous, I'm sure, in the eyes of the disciples. At the end of the meal, Jesus tells the disciples to go out among the crowd and pick up the leftover, the fragments, so that nothing may be lost, Jesus says, so that nothing may be lost. And when they do, John tells us that 12 baskets full of fragments are gathered up. Just think of it. 5,000 people fed on five loaves and two fish. Where is the miracle here? I don't know. I'm not going to try and dissect it. People have been trying to dissect this, this miracle story for, for as long as it's existed. You know what? It doesn't matter. Because the miracle really isn't even in the feeding. The miracle is in the offering. The miracle is the giving thanks. The miracle is in making sure that nothing is lost. Because you know what? That's the way God's kingdom operates. So this wonderful story is a model for God's kingdom. A microcosm of the macrocosm. We all have something to offer, like that child. Are we willing to offer it with the expectation that it will at least go toward helping to solve the problem? If not, maybe become the answer? Are we willing to, to offer ourselves 
whatever little bit that we might have, with joy, recognizing the abundance that there is in God's kingdom. Will we follow Jesus' example in giving thanks for no matter what is offered? Because in God's kingdom, no matter what is offered, it is a great gift. It is given from the heart. It is given with joy. And it is never meager. It is always seen as an abundant gift in God's eyes. And then finally, will we make sure that nothing is lost? Because again, in God's worldview, God wants nothing to be lost, nothing to be wasted. Everything is important. Everything is essential to the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. So yes, in this story today, we have the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. But today, I'd like us to just put aside that for a moment and think about these three elements. Think about the willingness to give and to give from whatever we have. Think about always giving thanks for whatever is offered. No matter if we might think it's insignificant, God will do extraordinary things with it. And finally, to remember that everything that is offered is of value. Nothing is to be lost, because in God's world, everything goes to the whole. And no matter what it is, it is important and essential for the building up of God's kingdom. The miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. The miracle of the gift of a small child. The miracle of giving thanks. And the miracle of valuing everything that is offered. God's kingdom. God's kingdom of love. God's kingdom of abundance. God's kingdom of giving for our, from ourselves so that all may experience the joy of abundance. Thanks be to God. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day, we bless you. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal 
that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for people in our community and throughout the world. O God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of sufferers, mercifully accept our prayers and grant to your servants commended to our prayers the help of your power. Jennifer Barnes, Patricia Barrett, Chris Butler, Patty Beerwag, Susan Brune, Ann Butler, Wayne Butler, Kenneth Chalk, Charlotte Collins, Melissa Conto, Holly Cox, Bill Cranick, James Crum, the family of Matthew Dogaday, 
Bill Dixon, Kathleen Dumont, Theron Dunn, Carrie Durham, Sed Durham, Scott Enderley, Jeff and Kathy Eyring, Kari Fandek, Alice and John Free, Keith Freshcorn, Carolina Green, Kendall Hancock, Nancy Haywood, Fred Hinder, Catherine Hogue, Finn Lake Goldstein, Mary Teresa Lurch, Brendan, Ellen Maxwell, Mary McAuliffe, Maureen McAuliffe, Ron McMahel, Harold McRae, Lorraine McSurgy, Norma Mackinall, Mary Ann Morton, Elizabeth and Stuart Nibley and their family, Eladio Ocampo, Flynn O'Hara, Ingrid Obrecht, Diane Proctor, Benicio Sachs Ortiz, Laura Rabb, Kimberly Ritter, Stephen Scradonis, Gary Shanley, Sam Snatchko, Brooke and Herb Thomas and their family, Kathy Waters, Garrett Waters, Betsy Wharton, Joanne Wise, Ann Warden, Eddie Youngblood, Carl, Anja, Frank, Morgan, Russ, Sally, Mattie, Beverly and David, Marion, Francis, and those we name at this time. May their sickness be turned into health and our sorrow into joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray to you for those we love but see no longer. We especially remember Matthew Dawday, 40-year-old nephew of Carolyn Janowski, who died unexpectedly two weeks ago. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, especially Colin Bartley, Joe Chilbert, Alfred Cianferrano, Jared and Bree Dorsey, Jasmine Dorsey, Michael Dooley, Miguel Ferrer, Matt Hamaker, Bob Hine, Matt Hine, Chris Hine, Jonathan Jurgensen, Lucy McVeigh, Xavier Reynolds, Armand Reynolds, Alex Rhodes, and those we name at this time. Defend them by, day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants celebrating birthdays in the coming week, especially Gus Hogan and Will Nelson. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen them to trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join with me in a prayer of thanksgiving. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. 
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for this virtual service. We hope that if you are ever in the neighborhood at 4700 Roland Avenue in Baltimore, that you will come and join us at 9 o'clock in the morning as we celebrate the Holy Eucharist together. And we pray that as you go about your work and play this coming week, that you might know the many blessings that God has in store for you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen. Eternal, taste and see that God is.